Hi everyone, this is Pasha. I want to go through some of the very useful formulas and features in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheet that come very handy in PPC management and I almost use all of them on a daily basis to manage my campaigns and ads. I'm going to show the exercises in this video in Microsoft Excel but if you use Google Sheets, all the lessons in this video are applicable there too as both Excel and Google Sheet are very similar in features. The first one is actually not a formula but a built-in feature in Excel. Text to columns lets you split text in your cells into multiple columns based on a specific character. In this example, I have a column for my campaign names. The naming convention that is used for these campaigns include the type of keyword, name of the city, name of the estate, and name of the country. When I want to analyze the performance of my campaigns, I want to see how each country, each estate, each city, and each keyword type performed so I can better make decisions on how to optimize the performance. By converting the text in the campaign name cells, I have split them into multiple columns to be able to filter my data based on the information that I want to see. Let's see how we can do this in Excel. This is a report that I have downloaded directly from Google Ads. It has different columns that I need for performance analysis such as keyword, campaign, ad group, cost and other metrics. Looking at the campaign names, as you see, I have similar campaigns in different regions. For example, for the first one, I have a recruitment, a campaign for recruitment, uh, which is in USA. I have similar one here in Canada, again for recruitment. And similarly, I have the recruitment campaigns in other regions such as EMEA, which is Europe and Middle East and also APAC, which is Asia and Australia. When I want to analyze the performance of my campaigns, I want to see, for example, how the recruitment campaign perform across all regions, not only USA or not only Canada. If I filter based on campaign name, campaign column, I can only see the results for recruitment campaign in USA but I want to see it across all locations. So that's why in my naming convention, I have separated each part of the campaign name by a specific character, which here is a vertical line. So using text to column feature in Excel, I can split each part into a column of its own. So I can filter based on each part. Let's do it together. This is my campaign name. The first thing that I need to do is copy this campaign name, the campaign that uh, the column that I want to split it into multiple columns. I'm going to copy that at the in the end of my spreadsheet in the last column, column N. Now from the top menu, click on data. There is this option takes two columns. I click on that. It gives you two options. The first one, uh, delimited, you select that one and you can split your text in those columns based on a specific character that you define. I'm going to select delimited, press next. It has some options uh, for some delimiters or characters and I'm going to use uh, uh, choose the last one, other, and the characters uh, that I want to split my cells uh, between them is this vertical line. So I'm going to type vertical line here. As you see, it's uh, splitting my column into three columns now. Press on next and just finish. Here it is. As you see, my campaign now has, three, has uh, become three columns uh, for each part of the campaign name based on the this character. 
vertical line you can uh, select any character or any uh, letter uh, for example dash underline comma now what I'm going to do is just uh, define a name for each column for example for this one I'm going to change, rename it as keyword type the next one I'm going to rename it as campaign group and the last one um, naming it as location These are my three new columns. Now what I can do is just filter my data based on each column. For example, here I'm going to filter it based on recruitment and only see the data for the recruitment campaign across all locations. Or I can filter it based on my other columns that I just created based on location or keyword type. Is number formula with if checks whether a specific text exists in a cell and then returns that text with a value that you define in a new column. As an example, in this screenshot I have a column that includes my campaign names. I have added a new column named region that returns me a value based on city names that are used in campaign cells. The first campaign is search campaign Los Angeles and my formula returns greater Los Angeles in column B because of the Los Angeles text in column A. Is number formula has more use cases that you can dig into more if you are interested. Let's use this formula in a real life example. This is a report downloaded from Google Ads Looking at my campaign names, I have campaign group, for example, jewelry in different locations or branded or furniture and also other campaign keyboard types, other topics across different campaigns in multiple locations. I want to see how, for example, jewelry campaign performed across all locations. I cannot use a text to column feature here because the, there is not a standard naming convention across all campaigns, all rows, all cells. Uh, some of them have this dash here while some of them they don't have it and the order of words in each campaign name is not the same. For example, some of them the word PPC has is at the beginning and some of them the word PPC like this one is at the end so and also for brand campaigns some of them are typed as branded some of them are typed as brand if I use text to columns it will not give me accurate column in columns because the orders are not the same there's not a same delimiter uh, used in all of them so this is where I I'm going to use the formula is number with if. Let me hide the columns that I don't need. Zoom in a little more so you can see easier. This is my original column for campaign name. I'm going to create a new column for keyword type what kind of keyword type uh, I, I am using in that campaign whether it is jewelry brand campaign competitor campaign toys campaign or furniture campaign all the uh, topics that all the keyword types that I know I have used in my campaigns I'm naming it as keyword type this is how I type the formula if is number search I'm going to tell it if you find this word brand in this cell I'm going to close my parentheses you need to close the parentheses as many a time as you have opened it I have two parentheses open here 
so I close it twice. I have another one open at the beginning, but I'm going to end it at the end this one at the very end. So to review again, this part of the formula is telling me if you find this uh, word, this character, this text brand in cell two, instead of that, instead of all the whole text in that cell, give me the word brand. This is the first part of the formula. I'm going to do the same this one for the word branded if is number search if you see this word if you find this word this text branded in cell a2 instead of that type brand because the campaigns that have the word brand or branded in in them they are both the same to me i want i want to see all of them uh, in the same section as brand continue my formula i'm just copying the previous part of the formula to save myself some time and just change the sections that i need if is number search competitor if you see this text, text competitor in cell A2, instead of that, just write it as competitors for me. These are for competitor campaigns that I'm running. Again, copying the previous part. If you find the word jewelry, give it to me as just jewelry instead of the whole text if you see the word furniture in cell a2 type it as furniture copying from the free previous part still if you see the word toys type it as toys I am almost done with my formula at the end I'm going to tell the system the formula if in cell a2 and previous uh, uh, the below cells the cells below that if you don't find any of this text brand branded competitor jewelry furniture or toys if you don't see any of these text in cell a2 so instead of that just type me accessories because I know for accessories I haven't used that in the name so I'm telling the system all the can all the campaigns the names that do not have these words toys jewelry brand or others they are just accessories so just give it uh, to me as accessories now I need to, I'm done with, done with my formula. I just need to close, the no, close it with a number of parentheses. The good thing with Excel is that when you close your formula, you end your formula and you don't use the number of parentheses to close it, it will correct it automatically for me. So I'm going just to press enter. It gives me a warning. It says that there is a typo in your formula, meaning that my parentheses at the end are not correct do you want to accept this correction yes I'm uh, using this formula a class all cells in column D let's use filter again now I have all these keyboard types as a column let's review this is for accessories, all the campaigns that have the accessories, the, the, the name, accessories in their name. So I can see only data for the accessories. I'm uh, also going to unhide all the columns. Or I can see the data for jewelry campaigns. All the jewelry campaigns across all 
campaigns in different locations. I'm going to create a, another column, this time for the location, region. Again, let me hide the columns that I don't need at this point. A new column named region. Again, similar. If is number search LA Metro if you notice in my column A the ones that are LA Metro some of them are LA Metro some of them are LA Metro only so those locations have not do not have the same name so if I filter them just in here I will get two different results for LA Metro and LA Metro only but I want them both to show as LA Metro so any text in this column a column a cell a2 any any time that you find this word la metro in cell 2 i forgot to open, uh, use equal sign at the beginning you always need to use equal at the beginning to use a formula if you find this word LA Metro in cell A2, just write, write it as LA Metro instead of the whole text. If is number search, if you see the word LA the text LA country county LA county E sorry LA county in cell A2 instead of that just write me LA county again I'm going to copy the previous for part of formula just change the part that I want to to save myself some time if in cell A2 I think I have used one uh, less parentheses here it is okay if you see the text Burbank Give it to me as Burbank. Copying formula. If you see the text Long Beach, these are all the name of the cities in Los Angeles area. If you see the word Long Beach in the A2 cell, give, type it for me as Long Beach. If you see the word Santa Monica, type it as Santa Monica. And similarly to the previous formula, if you don't find any of these words, LA Metro, LA Country, Burbank, Long Beach and Santa Monica in cell A2 just simply type it as Southern California for me it's correcting the number of parentheses to end and here it is now I, ha I have all my locations in a single column I can choose to see only data for LA Metro or see data for jewelry campaign in LA Metro
um, unhiding all my columns. So now I can easier analyze and review the performance of each location and each campaign type. Concatenate and ampersand are two functions in Excel that do the same thing. It allows you to join values from different cells into one cell. It somehow does the opposite of text to columns feature. Looking at this example, I have some columns with different values and in column E, I have created campaign names from those cells by using concatenate formula. I have some columns here for the country, product category, gender, and keyword match type. Based on these columns, I want to create campaign name for them. I'm going to do it twice, once with concatenate formula and once with ampersand. Using concatenate, I'm typing concatenate A2, comma. Now I can add uh, using quotation mark, I can add whatever that I want to put between those cell names. I'm going to use, put a space dash a space, comma. B2, again I'm going to use dash space dash space between quotations so I can put that between B2 and C2. And uh, D2 is the end. As you see, I am using concatenate formula. I created a campaign name through this information. I can now I can do the same thing with ampersand. cell A2 and whatever I want to put between A2 and B2 this part is not required it depends on you whether you want to put anything between A2 and B2 that which naturally you want to somehow differentiate between each section I have missed the one a person here. Here it is. They it gives me the same result once with concatenate and once with ampersand. In another example, I have a landing page. I want to run advertisement for that in different platforms LinkedIn Google Facebook so I want to add tracking code UTM source and UTM medium to my to the end of my landing page so I can track in Google Analytics which platform sent the visitors to this landing page I'm going to use concatenate uh, for this exercise First, I select A2, my landing page. I need to add a question mark after that so my tracking code works correctly. Now I'm going to select UTM source. 
because I want to, I want this part of the formula, this B1, UTM underline source is equal to, I stay fixed in my formula. So when I copy my formula to another section of, another section of my spreadsheet, this part doesn't change, it stays at B1. I select it and press F4 on my keyboard. It adds a dollar sign uh, around that. Now B2. Now I have to add ampersand as part of my tracking code. Again, UTM medium C1. I want it to I want it to stay fixed in my formula. Doesn't change even when I copy that. Press F4 in my keyboard and C2. Let's see how it changed. My landing page question mark UTM source is equal to PPC and UTM medium is equal to LinkedIn. Using the dollar sign resulted in C1 and B1 stay fixed in my, my formula even though I dragged it to the bottom row, bottom cells, while the other part A4, B4 and C4 change according to the uh, number of row so this dollar sign is very useful a lot of times when you are using formulas in excel when you analyze the performance of your campaigns you want to see how your metrics change weekly or monthly especially after you make some kind of change to your campaigns. In this screenshot, I am reviewing the data for a campaign in two different weeks. In column D, I have calculated the difference for each metric between week 1 and week 2, which tells me, for example, the impressions for my campaign has increased 34% in the second week, which has resulted in 28% more clicks. Subsequently, 28% increase in clicks led to 10% more conversions, which comes at 26% higher cost per acquisition. So looking at how much each metric has increased or decreased in percentage gives me better insights about the performance of my campaigns. This is data for two weeks performance of a Google Ads campaign. I named each week as week one and week two. I want to see how the performance of each metric changed from week one to week two. Uh, so I can better understand how it impacted other metrics. So I want to, I need to see how the, uh, how much percentage increased or decreased. I can do it in two different ways for this formula. The second metric, the week two minus week one divided into week one. I'm formatting it as percentage. Now dragging the formula to the bottom. What I understand from here, it says that the cost of my campaign has increased 39% from week one to week two. This increase increased and resulted in 34% higher impression week over week and 34% higher impression means 28% higher clicks for me. My click through rate 5% decrease, which is which makes sense because usually when you have higher impression and higher clicks, your CTR goes down. Also, my CPC increased in for increased 9% from week 1 to week 2 which again makes sense to me because when you receive higher clicks 
and you increase your cost it's natural for your CPC to increase a little my conversion rate decreased 14% uh, from week 1 to week 2 even though my conversions improved 10% higher in uh, conversions but 14% lower conversion rate also my cost per acquisition increased 26% so looking at how how much the percentage increased or decreased over time gives you good insights about whether your campaign is performing in the right direction or you need to make some changes when you're working with data and spreadsheets many times happen that you want to compare two tables or update your tables with the new information that you receive as a simple example here I have two tables. Table 1 contains first name and last name and table 2 contains phone number for those names. Both tables have a column named ID which has the same values although there are more values in ID column in table 2. Using VLOOKUP function I was able to find the phone numbers for the people of table 1 in table 2 and add those phone numbers from table 2 to table 1. VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP, which is a similar function, has other use cases that you can dig into more if you are interested. Let's practice this exercise together. I want to show the VLOOKUP formula in an e-commerce situation. These are the list of uh, some products in an health and beauty in a health and beauty category type on my e-commerce website. Each product has price and uh, an ID named SQ, which is the ID that when I want to make it any change to these items on my website, I need to use this ID so my website recognize uh, the product. I also have as a code, another code for my products, which is supplier code, with the supplier, the person that I want the products, I buy the products from, the company, uses these codes when they send me a new list uh, about the new price or uh, a status of the products, whether they are active or not anymore. This supplier has sent me a new list uh, based on the code and updated price now I, I need to find these codes in my items in my website products and update the price accordingly what I'm going to do is just uh, first copy these two columns from the second spreadsheet into my new in the, my first spreadsheet let me zoom a little So these two columns, code from the second spreadsheet and supplier code, they are the same. Even though the names are different, but the codes are actually the same thing, only the order is different. So because I have the same code, the uh, same ID in both spreadsheets, I can update the price my uh, prices based on the second spreadsheet using VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to create a new column called new price in my original table. This is how I'm using the VLOOKUP formula. Typing VLOOKUP. I select the cell from my table from the shared column which is the same as the column G in second table so I select the code in my own table comma now I'm going to select the new the code in the second spreadsheet and the new uh, price or uh, whatever column that you want to get the information from 
I'm going to select both in all uh, all the cells, the whole range. Because I want my range to stay fixed, I don't want my range, range, range of selected cells to change. When I copy this formula, I use F4 on my keyboard. I, sel I select F4. So the, this dollar sign helps the range stay fixed. And at the end, I just type 2 and false. For this two and false, you uh, you can. There are other options that you can read into that more. Uh, but this two and two and false in the third and fourth section of the formula usually gives gives you the correct result that you want. There are other numbers uh, that you can type and you can type true uh, instead of false, which gives uh, which makes some changes to how VLOOKUP formula work. It depends on how you want to use it. In this exercise, I'm going to use two comma false. I'm copying the formula to the end. As you see, my prices are updated based on the second column. To double check, I'm going to uh, check one of the codes manually from the first table into second table. The price must be this. Yes, that's the same price. One million twenty nine six hundred. One million twenty nine six hundred. I usually do this just to double check to make sure that my formula works correctly. Also, some prices are marked as NA, not available. It means that this code is not available in the new list. When I search it, it doesn't find it. It means that. Uh, this product is out of stock now and I need to disable it on my website. This example was in an e-commerce but for, uh, VLOOKUP formula is actually is something that you can always use in any situation when you are comparing two tables which have one same column. Pivot table is a very useful tool when you want to summarize and analyze your data. You can find patterns and trends in your data and make comparisons very easily. Let's see a real life example. This is the same data set that we previously reviewed in the first exercise of this video. This is a report that I have downloaded from Google Ads for the performance of my campaigns. It gives me all the details that I need uh, based on day. But the thing with this report is that it doesn't give me the summary, the, doesn't show me the trends, how the campaigns, whether the campaigns perform well or not. And it's not easy to compare data. I cannot go through more than 140,000 records of data. So, this is where pivot table comes very handy. By, by creating a pivot table from large amount of data in Excel, you, you can see trends and analyze the performance to better understand what changes you need to make. In order to create a pivot table, on the top menu, click on insert, then pivot table, and cl click OK. It will give you a new sheet. It will create a new sheet with where you can build your pivot table. Let's create a pivot table for this data set together. In the right side, in the row section, I can use my dimensions, the metric, the columns that are not numbers, such as campaign name, ad group, keyboard, Let's say I'm adding campaign group here. All the campaigns that I, I have. I'm going to zoom a little. Now in the value section next to the rows, I can add my metrics, my numbers, cost, clicks, 
impressions and conversions it shows me the summary of data it, uh, if i sort it if i sort it based on cost uh, largest to lowest and let me uh, change the format to dollars now i can see that the hr campaign has spent uh, the highest amount and coaching campaigns comes the second now i can add some more calculated fields based on the default metrics that i have to for example see uh, how the click-through rate compares between each campaign on the top menu pivot table analyze from fields items and set calculated fields i can create some new custom fields i'm creating one field for click-through rate or CTR to calculate CTR you divide clicks into impressions I'm changing the format to percentage now I can see for example the coaching campaign has a very high CTR click-through rate while there are some other campaigns that have much lower conversion rate or I'm going to add to create another calculated field for cost per acquisition or CPA to calculate CPA I divide spend cost into number of conversions and showing it as dollar now i can see whether these campaigns the cost per acquisition is profitable for me or not which campaign has the highest amount of cpa and which campaign has the lowest cpa the lowest cpa generally is better uh, means that your campaigns are most more cost eff effective I can play around with my data for example I can look at the performance of brand and non-brand campaigns the CPA is very similar for both brand and non-brand even though the brand campaign has much higher click-through rate I can see even uh, based on my labels I can see the performance of my landing page I have tested two landing page in this campaign and the first landing page has higher CTR but usually you want to look at the conversion rate and CPA for the performance of landing page the second one even though it has lower click-through rate but it has uh, significantly lower cost per acquisition so this landing page is performing better for me and the cost is very similar between the two landing pages or I can play around with it more uh, put more dimensions into row section and see uh, for example in each campaign how they perform in different countries in my HR campaign I have the highest click-through click rate in MAO region in Europe while the Canada, Canada has very low CTR in this campaign so it tells me this HR campaign might not be very popular in Canada although I should look at other uh, metrics too MAO that has the highest click-through rate but the CPA is uh, uh, significantly higher too so depending on the objective of my campaign, my advertisement, I can make decisions whether uh, this MAR is a profitable or not. It has high click-through rate, it's bringing a lot of customers, visitors into my website, but the cost per acquisition is pretty high compared to other locations. Similarly, for other campaigns, I can compare the performance in each location. Pivot tables gives me 
a very good summary of how my campaigns are performing while if I want to get those insights from the raw data even though I have all the data it's actually impossible to understand how the USA campaign performed overall in each campaign group 